Okay, so welcome back. I'm up to section seven, and it's a bit more about loops. Um, trying something out differently. I've got a bit of a microphone there. I might try a different microphone, just trying to improve the audio a bit. Um, okay, so we're up to some loops. So let's have a look at this. Um, so far, we've seen loops that are like for i in range ten, um, which will print. Well, what will it print? Um, if we go for i in range ten, print i. So we've seen that. Run that, and on oh, zero to nine. So ten numbers that's starting at zero. So these are really great if we know exactly how many things that we need to count. But sometimes, sometimes we don't need to know how many times, but we want to loop over something. So we've also used for loops, um, like so if we've got a string word equals hello, um, we can uh, for letter in, in word, print letter. And that should print hello. Yeah, so two nice for loops. So we can look at um, while loops. While loops do something while a condition is true. Now a condition, condition is just something that is either true or false. So we're going to have a look at that. So command equals input first command. While command, this is not equal to stop, print you enter the command, and then ask for it again and print stop. So this is really useful for continuing like this um, paradigm or this pattern. It's really useful for um, asking for something until we quit. So first command, um, help other people. Um, what else are we going to do? We're going to flee, we're going to attack, we're going to dodge, stop. So you can see that that, while it's not equal to, keep doing that. It's just going to do it while. That's what's called a while loop. Tell me that. Um, now here, these are really really important. This is a flow chart. So I'm going to zoom that a bit. Hopefully that. Well, I don't know if that works, but I'll have a look in the video and I might use that a bit more. The zoom. Um, so this is a flow chart. So we ask the user for commands. So we draw that in the box. Save that into a variable. Is the command not equal to stop? And they go true or false, and it gets a bit confusing when your true is not equal to true and false. So you can just yes for true, no. So is the command not equal to false? No, it is not equal to false, so it's anything else but that. So we print the command, ask for a new one, and keep looping. So we do that. If it is not equal to, so uh, it will print stop. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, command not equal to stop is false. So while command not equal to stop, so if it's not equal to stop, it means it's equal to anything but stop. Hopefully that makes sense. You're probably going, dude, you just confused me 10 times more than what I was before, but work through it, follow this logic, see, like, and make sure you understand these. Um, very helpful to draw these out if, um, when you're a bit confused, um, make sure you get your logic right. So many times you write a program and you've got your trues and falses around the wrong way. Um, they can be pretty tricky to get um, right. So here's a few things. You finished before you started. So if you went command equals stop, well, guess what? It equals stop, so it's never going to do that. Um, not setting it up beforehand. While command not equal stop, it's just going to go, what are you talking about? I don't know what stop is. Um, yeah, command, I don't know what command is, sorry. You, so you need to have that variable declared before you start your, um, your loop. So to fix that one up, we would just go, and that, and fix it up. So yeah, you enter, and then you go. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, oh, there's a few other ones. Um, so just waiting for internet to move on to the next one. Oh, actually, no, we're not. We're waiting for me to enter stop. Sorry about that one. Here we go. Another common mistake with while loops is the infinite loop. You do this with for loops as well, but while loops. Then command equals input first command. While command not equal to stop, print that. And guess what? Now, this is going to go fully. What's it going to do? It's just going to keep entering fleet because you haven't actually given it a chance to do that. So your interpreter session was terminated because your CPU limit. So that's just a nice way of saying you made an infinite loop. Most modern operating systems or most operating systems can start to detect these things. Sometimes, if you depend on language, you will end up crashing your browser or your thing. you'll run out of memory, um, run out of CPU executions, um, and you'll get a nice little message like that. So like we CPU limit. So there you go. And we printed quite a few of them. We could actually find out how many we can do. Um, let's go. We're just working out how many we can do. I, I equals zero. I plus equals one u, and I'm going to go print stir i plus colon like that, and let's see how many we can actually do. Ah, oh, sorry, I did the wrong one, so let's run that. Just seeing, but so flee, <coughs> so quite a few, so 200,000, so that's pretty good. Um, okay, so first challenge for this number seven is, um, when your alarm goes off, you can hit the snooze button and fall back asleep. So we're writing a program that won't let you snooze too long. Oh, I hate this program already. So we're gonna write a program that should print out meet, 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 and then ask user, are you up, until you enter, I am up. So if you says anything else, the program should print meet, meet, meet. So imagine the snooze button, you go snooze, it goes beep, 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 and you need to keep hitting say, I'm up, I'm up. And then once you've done that, your program prints, took you long enough. Another example, okay, so how would we do this? So we, we've taken input, I am up, so we need a variable, and I'm gonna call it 
sleepy equals, and I'm just going to make it empty. No, that's not what I'm going to do. While sleepy not equal to, I am up. Now, this is the, par the pattern that we used earlier. So while it's not, we're going to print, and it's me, me, me. That would be very annoying. So, and then it's going to ask you, we're going to say sleepy equals input, and we're just asking, are you up? Question mark space, finish. And then, so that there is the loop. And then if we type I am up, it's going to end. And then at the end of the indent block, I'm going to print took you long enough. And that will only ever happen when sleep equals I am up. Let's have a look at that. Are you up? No. Me, 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 are you up? Yes. Are you up? I am up. So I've got to type next to much mark. Took you long enough. <laughs> so three goes. So let's have a look. Is that correct? What? I. Uh, it's meant to output me, 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 are you up? Are you up? Are you up? Seems great, except for missing all extra. Ah, oh, took you long enough. Exclam exclamation mark. So, remember how I've been going about attention to detail? Pay attention, and you're going, hey, dude, I spotted that ages ago. Stop talking to me. It's a video. I can't hear you. So, just chill. Um, are you up? I am. Oh. Took you long enough. Let's have a look. So, programmers make mistakes. So, you've just got to accept it, fix them. Um, well, it's exactly the same as what I did before, Sleepy. Yeah. So, I've got to change a little bit. I want to prove that this is run. I am up, took you long enough, mark, submit. Yay, look at that, all test passed. Okay, so next one along. So, the condition of the while loop can be anything that is true or false. Here is another example where we keep repeating the loop while the user is typing it up. Okay, so line equals input, enter line, while line is up. So that is either true or false. Stop shouting, input, enter line, print, thank you. So let's have a look at this. Shout, no, okay. Oh, very cool, I like Python programs, so. Um, Anything that can be true or false. So while three is, like you can use this for guessing games, so enter a guess while guess is not equal to your answer. Enter a guess, and you can do counts. So you can start using loops to start doing games and things like that, so guessing games. Um, pattern that you need to use when writing programs is three, multiple lines until a blank line is entered. Here's how we do this. So run code, enter a line, okay, okay, you've stopped. So while line not equal to, so while line, what, what does that mean? So that just about that is exactly the same as while line not equal to that. So while line is something. If it's nothing, then line is false. So that's just how Python does it. Other languages don't do it, but um, it's a shortcut way of saying is line equal to something. Um, doing extra things each loop. Remember, everything that should be repeated must be inside the while loop. That means indented. So uppercase, lowercase, enter line, finish. So let's have a look at what this does. Enter line. Um, may the force be with you. Original, may the force be with you, may the force be with you. Cool, and then finished. That's pretty cool. So you must indent all the lines of the code which are inside by adding spaces at the beginning. So make sure you do it. If I add an extra space, error, indentation error, unexpected, and even highlights and I go, oh, sorry, and I fix it up. Okay, un-American spelling, what's this one about? So lots of difference between American and British spellings. Can I have a look at this? Let's have a quick look. Um, essentially, too long didn't read, but Americans can't spell, and they put O-R instead of O-U-R. Um, if I start, like, if Mr. Trump's listening, you guys can't spell, um, so deal with it. Um, and you put no U and uh, Z. Is it Z? No, it's a Z. So you can't, like, can't even say the letter properly, let alone spell with it. So we're going to write a program change all instances of O R to O U R, so color, C O L O R to color, and I Z Z Z Z, with Z's on top, um, to I C. Um, only need to translate lowercase letters for this and should read multiple lines of input from the user, translate each line and print out the translated line. Your program should keep translating until the user enters a blank line. So don't rely on room to recognize humor. You can analyze the patterns that will help you visualize the situation, vocalize your favorites. Okay, here's another example. Um, so we'll test with a couple of those. So how do we start that? We want to input a line of text, so line, and we're going to do a while loop. So line equals that. While line, so that's why I put the space there. So, so while line, Line equals input line, so just line, really easy prompt. Um, so we're going to output a message. So message equals, and we've got line dot replace. And we're replacing OR for OUR. And message equals message. Uh, actually, we can just go line equals line line dot replace. And we're going to go IZE with ISE. And we're going to say if line print print line. Now, why did I put that in there? Just to make sure 
that we've got something, otherwise we're not going to do anything. So it's just going to stop. So let's have a look at that. Because if I don't put that in there, I'll hit, it'll, it'll do something. So let's have a look. Um, and this reminds us to use the replace method, which we did, which we remembered. So let's have a look at this. So the line, I'm going to use this one. Um, don't rely on rumor, recognize. And let's have a look at this one. A citizen. And let's have a look. It stops. That was right. Let's have a mark. Cool. So you could probably have done it a little bit more efficiently, but that works well for me. So moving right along, we've got counters. Sometimes you want to keep track of how many times you do something while loop. So you've got this thing, counter, counter equals counter plus one. What? That doesn't really make sense. What you're doing is you're taking the value of counter and you're adding one to it. So here you go, counter equals one. Guess equals, guess my favorite color. Or guess is, guess dot lower, not equal to yellow. Counter equals counter plus one, adds one to the counter. And it says try again, and then you've got it in counter tries. So um, let's have a run of this. What's my favorite color? Red, blue, green, um, what? Ah, yellow. Five tries. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. So, um, you can, yeah, just, you might see something like counter plus equals one. So that's just saying counter equals counter plus one. So either of those are exactly the same. So just sometimes you might have seen me do this before. That's all it's saying. It's neat to have saying it. Same thing. Um, we have a string. If we're adding one to the counter each time, go through the loop. We also add to a string each time we read a message while message not equal to e, print message, message equals message plus e. This loop just keeps running until a message string equals to five e's. Um, as soon as it's equal, the loop stops, so it never prints that. Okay, if you want to program print it out, you add a final print one. Yeah, okay, so let's have a look. Yep. Okay, so that's not too bad. Password security is very important. Having a guessable password can put your data identity. Facebook? Oh no, my Facebook like history is at risk. Oh, that's crisis. So it's common for password crackers to try guessing every possible comp password until eventually one is correct. Um, correct. Longer passwords such as this one. So let's have a look. I like these links. Uh, oh, K X K C D is absolutely awesome. Really worth um, having a look at this web comic. So um, and the thing explainer um, is a book that um, he wrote, and his name is Randall or something like that. Uh, correct horse battery. Staple. So, how to make passwords that are easy to remember. So, we're going to write a password that um, repeatedly asks you to try and enter a guess for a password, and we're going to use the correct horse battery staple as a correct password. Once you guess the password correctly, you should print password correct followed by the incorrect guesses. So, okay, so this looks pretty much like um, this here with the counter. So, we're going to set up a counter, guess the password while, the, while um, my guess is not equal to password, add one to the counter, try again, and then eventually print that. So, let's have a look. So, correct. Password equals that. Correct password equals correct horse battery staple. Um, what have we got next? We've got our password guess. Password equals password guess equals that. Our counter equals zero. Doing it slightly differently. Um, and while password guess not equal to correct password. So while we're still wrong, we're going to go counter plus equals. One, which is exactly the same, exactly the same as counter equals counter plus one, and we're going to say password equals equals input guess, um, and then we're going to say um, actually we don't want to print anything until print password correct print you made plus counter, and that's, oh, what have I done wrong? Can anyone guess? Come on, tell me. Plus, there's a couple of mistakes there, um, and I'll pick them up in a second. Okay, so the first one is, I didn't put space there. So that's a counter is an integer, and if I go there, it's just going to go blah. So I actually have to say, to do this, I have to say string around counter. So if I'm outputting a number, I have to convert it to a string. So that's just how um, that works. Um, and so made one guess, but I'm actually incrementing that. And if I guess it correctly, is it going to be the right amount? So let's have a look. I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to type it out. Copy and paste. So I think I'm going to have to take one off counter, but let's test guess. Password, red, secret, for um, what? Why is that not doing? I am. So while. Because uh, I am comparing password to password guess, so that is why. So I was saying password because that password guess, so that was an infinite loop, and that was another mistake. You guys can go, stop yelling at me. I'm only human, like we all make mistakes. 
secret two attempts. Yep, that looks alright. Guess Fred, Frank, secret, dog, name, Fido, Fluffy, Fluffoo. Seven, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Incorrect. So I need to actually take one off that counter minus one. So that should be correct. So I'm going to run it and I'm just going to have no incorrect attempts. Let's have a look. That's correct. Except for what did I do wrong? What is it? Um, correct. Oh, pay attention to detail, dude. Right, so let's run it again. Password correct. Awesome password cracker. Is it fail? Uh, what? Yes, password. You made four incorrect. What was it meant? To output. And I am guessing to password. Attention, like you can yell at me now because that was just a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. All test pass. Absolutely awesome. So let's keep going. Using numbers in while loops. So i equals zero, i is less than three, print i, i equals i plus one. So um, we can use numbers to make a decision. So here it will print out zero, one, two, because it won't do three because three is not less than three. Three is equal to three. If we want it to print three as well, we just put is equal to. So that's something to look out for. It's not inclusive. If we want to include that number, we need the equal sign. Um, stepping through loops, so same as a for loop, we can just add two to it. Um, if we want to count in doubles to 20, 220 inclusive. Um, yeah, easy peasy. Um, if, actually, if we want to print out our three times table up to 36. So how would we actually do that? We would print out, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, how would we do that? Times table equals three. So print, uh, we'll go stir times table, times table plus three, so it's a three, times by plus, it's messy when you're doing string, but string i plus equal to, and I'm gonna go stir, and I'm gonna say times table times by i, to close my printing, so it can I see any mistakes there, pluses, plus, um, I've got a plus there, let's have a look. File i equals i plus three, syntax, invalid syntax, which means that, ah, string times table, close that one off. So run that, three times zero, three times 36, ah, i plus one. So there we go, 36 months. So if I want to change my time table to five times table, there we go. So a couple of things that I, around with there but so revert it back to its original. Um, counting down loops exactly the same you just do a minus and um, just make sure you, how you initialize it make sure you terminate it if you don't do something like that so it will comment that out and we run that it's just going to print six until we hit stop and that's a couple hundred thousand times um, yeah, so back to that so we've got one more task for this one when you eat cookies to friends everyone eats a cookie at exactly the same time so if you're in a group of five Friends, the number of remaining cookies goes down by five each time. Write a program to track the number of cookies left. Unfortunately, everyone is too polite to eat a cookie. If there is enough for everyone, if this happens, the program should stop and print how many cookies were wasted. So how many cookies, how many friends? You can assume that the input number of friends will always be greater than zero. Well, lucky you, somebody's got one or more friends. So how would we do this? So we're going to input two integers. So we know how to do this. Cookies equals integer input. And we say how many cookies? So we've done this so many times before. Remember, we need to close it twice there. That's something I do all the time. Friends equals int input how many friend, friends and um, for me that would be zero, one maybe, one or two depending on how much I paid them or how much, no, that's it. Um, how many Facebook friends you got? None, not on Facebook. Um, then we need to go, okay, while cookies, number of cookies minus the number of friends is greater than and equal to zero, print there are plus string cookies cookies left, full stop, close quote, close bracket. Cookies equals cookies minus friends, which could be the same as close equals friends. And then we're going to print this is a, it's a string cookies plus wasted. And do you know the sad thing is nobody 
likes wasted cookies. So we grab the cookies into a string with input, convert it to an integer and put it into a variable with cookies. We grab a string, convert it to an integer and put it into friends and we fix up our spelling mistake. While cookies minus friends is greater than or equal to zero, so first time round, could be greater than or equal to zero, print there are, how many cookies left? And cookies equals cookies minus friends, so we, cookies are, friends are eating the cookies, so let's see if that works. So run how many cookies, 14, how many friends, 3, 14, 11, 8, 5, there are two cookies wasted, and just check that we're doing that, and 8 and 4, no cookies wasted, 1, 23, 2 friends, <laughs> they'll be fat friends by the time they eat all those cookies, 1 cookie wasted, and let's see if that works. Yay, it passed. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Pro tips. Now you're onto, the, onto counting. But how is, how's this for counting? It's module eight, time for a pro tip. There's no such thing as a road or program, one that just isn't working yet. Keep debugging and you'll get there. And computers are really, really stupid and they only do what you tell them to. So if there's a problem in the code, just try and find it, work on the logic. Um, go back, use those flowcharts that were back somewhere, back here. Um, use flowcharts, help debug your program. Okay, so we are now up to um, module 8, so I'll see you for module 8 shortly. Thanks a lot.